Now let's look at a practice question about how to do the test of goodness of fit. So this question says a manager believes that the shelf life of an apple juice is normally distributed. A sample of thirty containers of juice was taken, and the shelf life was recorded. You are given the results below. The average shelf life in the sample was twenty three point zero seven days. With a standard deviation of four point two nine days, so we have those thirty samples shows the different shelf life. Okay, so the first question asks to develop the non and alternative hypothesis, and then asks to compute the test statistics for the goodness of fit test. The last question said at a five percent level significance using the p-value approach test the hypothesis. What do you conclude about the distribution? So before we solve for this question, let's just review the section three talking about goodness of fit test of chapter twelve. Okay, so an important application of a chi-square test is to determine whether a population being sampled has a special Probability distribution. So, goodness of fit test is an important application of chi-square test. So, for example, let's assume a population is assumed with a normal distribution, just like this question, right? We will use goodness of fit test to determine if the sample data indicates whether the assumption of a normal distribution is appropriate. Therefore, that means. We assume the population is normally distributed. Then we want to test this assumption is correct or not. So we、we'll、use the sample data to test or to indicate whether this assumption is appropriate or not. However, if you still remember chi-square test, we use it to do the categorical variable test, right? But normal distribution is continuous. As far as we know, that normal distribution table. Let me just draw a graph of normal distribution table. Right. So this is the curve of normal distribution. Right. And we notice is continuous. However, if we want to apply chi-square test, this type of a test always using categorical. Data, right? So we must modify the way to define a category, and then we need to compute the expected frequency. Okay. So there is some tricks I will introduce here. Most of the time, we will define k intervals of the value, so that the expected frequency are at least five for each interval. So first, we need to Divide this continuous distribution into several intervals. Okay, so we will divide it into several intervals, maybe k intervals, right? And then we can expect it that the expected frequency are at least five for each interval. Most of the time, we will use equal probability intervals. Because this is a good approach, I would like to show how to do this in our practice question. And then after that, we need to compute a chi-square test statistics, right? And then using the either the p-value approach or critical value approach to see if we、we'll、reject the non-hypothesis or not. So as we just mentioned that. Normal distribution is a continuous distribution, right? Like this. So we need to modify this continuous variables into categorical variables. So how can we do that? Generally, we would like to use some common percentage, like ten percent, twenty percent, something like that. Okay, maybe this is thirty percent. Etc. Okay. So this is some commonly used percentage and the corresponding z value showing here. So with this type of their percentage, like equal 
probability. Equal probability intervals. So we will use equal probability intervals to define the category. To define the categories. And then after that, we can switch the continuous distribution into categorical variables. And one thing I want to emphasize is for the chi-square distribution, we also need the degrees of the freedom, okay? So for the degrees of the freedom, we will use K subtract P subtract one to compute this degrees of the freedom. So here K is the K intervals. That means uh, how many intervals you divide this continuous distribution, okay? So sometimes we will use maybe 10 intervals. Sometimes we will need to use maybe five intervals, okay? And P here will be the number of the parameters. So for example, in our question, we have the sample mean. We also have the standard deviation. So we have two parameters, right? So let's see how we can use those informations to solve for this practice question. 